Hi friends and welcome to my channel, Flumina Pachis. My name is Paula. I'm a Catholic uh, seer. I see in the spirit, um, is my one of my gifts in the Holy Spirit is prophecy. And I can hear the voice of God in so many different ways. He communicates constantly to me. And the Lord has raised me up to be a prophet to the nations, which is really crazy for me to say. I don't like to say that, um, but I guess I need to tell you what this channel is about. So um, thank you for coming by. I do have a message for Advent for the people of God. And the Lord speaks to me through visions. I see a lot. Um, I've always had this gift. I didn't know, I, I thought I just had a really vivid imagination, but it turns out that uh, things uh, later on in my life began to start coming to pass. I have a very dr active dream life and my dreams would come to pass. And the Bible actually calls dreams visions of the night in, I uh, believe, Joel, uh, the book of Joel. And so uh, I primarily see and hear the voice of God. So those are the two senses that I that I um, operate in. And so I decided to make this channel because uh, as a prophet to the nations, I have words for, for many different countries and, and regions. And I, I feel that I feel an urgency on the Lord's heart to get them out. And uh, you won't find me on any other social media platform other than maybe Facebook for my personal stuff that I don't even post on there hardly. Uh, one, because um, I'm a very fragile human being and to keep the purity of my gift, I have to really guard what the things that I see, uh, the things that I entertain my mind on. And so I don't have any other platform other than my blog on WordPress that I'll link in the description box below and this video platform, Flumin Apaches. So uh, I am Catholic. So uh a lot of the channels on prophecy out there on youtube are going to be primarily christian based and which is great i i I, re I receive so much from them and then you have other platforms on catholic channels i think the only real one that i've seen is um maybe queen of peace media um but there's really not a lot of catholic prophetic voices out there and and it's a, it's a shame because God does speak to people in the Catholic Church. We are Christians, I will say that. We still believe in the Trinity. We believe, we. I believe it's the one true faith. Um, so anyway, I mentioned that because this channel is Catholic and you will find the Virgin Mary um, in, in, in here. I'm going to talk about the Rosary. I'm going to talk about many of the Catholic, pers maybe just like a Catholic perspective on uh, what I see. And I do have to mention that um, that Mary is a big source of facilitating messages to me uh, the ro through the Rosary especially. And I'll make some videos on that um, as well. And then also, also the Eucharist has been uh, a huge source of revelation a channel of revelation for me as well. Um, I see in the spirit all the time. Like I don't need to be uh, trying to stir myself up or anything like that. Like I literally, I wake up and I will see something and the Lord will instruct my day and ordain my thoughts. And so I hope that, um, that the Lord will do and bless you with that as well. Actually, the word that I'm going to get into here for Advent is about, uh, is about, some of that as well and so this was a, a I, I I started to uh, realize that the Lord wanted to speak about Advent to me specifically um, because I had the best Advent ever last year and it was actually a miraculous Advent for me I got a huge breakthrough in my marriage and my personal life and uh, just just a uh, in my walk with the Lord, even with the with my gift as well, it, it really started to accelerate. God put people in my life. God put people in my husband's life, uh, where we both grew in 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 what God has uh, called us both to do. So, um, so yeah, I didn't. I wasn't sure that 
that uh, this message was for Advent, but God confirmed it multiple times. And then I woke up this morning and he told me I needed to finally record this video. So here I go, uh, this message, uh, I write it down um, because as I'm seeing, I'm hearing the voice of God. And so I've got a, a dual thing going on here, which I think is good because I believe the voice of God is, is, is you know, I don't audibly hear the voice of God. I've, I haven't had that grace. I believe some people at some point in their life do, uh, but that is very, very, very rare. Um, so the voice of God is not really audibly heard. It is discerned. And so <clears throat> it takes me a little bit to research what God is showing me, you know, and how, how are these puzzle pieces fitting together, you know. And I've said this before in another video, but it, it says in Proverbs that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter and it is the glory of kings like you and me. It is the glory of kings to search that matter out. So it is in the seeking that we find. It is in the seeking, the pursuing of God the Father that he blesses us. And, and that is our glory. And so I get obsessed. I really do obsess over the most random um, things that you would ever think about. But that's how the Lord speaks to me. And so um, in this word here, uh, I've discerned, I, I've both seen and I've heard and so uh, this, when I engage and activate two of my spiritual senses, it becomes a much more reliable word for me to come out here and, and publish this on a video. So here it goes, and I'm going to just insert my commentary yeah. as I go because I want to explain um, what, the, what the Lord is saying. So uh, I'll preface with this. The Lord started showing me a table and a cross. For like, I've been seeing this for the last two weeks. The last two weeks he's been saying, he put a, he's been saying, I'm putting a table before you. I'm putting a table before you come. And then um, he'll say, he'll show me just crucifix, not crucifix, an actual cross without Jesus dying on it. He'll just show me the crucifix, the crucifix. And so, um, and so I finally clicked on me that God was talking about the heavenly table. He lit, he I actually heard heavenly table and so that changes things that that changed my discernment and my perspective and I and I, I you know being aware of the times that were coming into Advent the first Sunday of Advent this this coming Sunday I put the two together and 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 the Lord has been confirming that and like I said this morning he said go ahead and and release it so uh, the Lord said there is a hunger right now in my people and I desire to fill them with satisfaction. This is why I am placing a table before you. This is important. Okay. It's, it's weird that the Lord said this is important, but like, okay. Um, and so right when I started to write this down, the glory hit me and, I, and things actually started to make sense. So this is why like, Right, I have to write this down because the Lord begins to unfold things in the spirit. And so what is this hunger that he's talking about? I mean, just look around, you know, you just got to watch the, the news for five minutes. And people, people are hungry for the Lord. They're hungry for the word of God. They're hungry for uh, a, a, a church that's alive. You know, it's like you walk into some of these churches. I'm sorry, like, I just, I'm going to keep it real on this channel, but you like go to some of these churches and it's like, have y'all heard of the Holy Spirit? You know, like, do you guys, you know, is this a Trinitarian church? But cause it's so dead, you know, it's so dead and the, the homilies are just really weak and, and we're not hearing, like we're not hearing what the church of God needs to hear. And that's why I'm really picky about my home church where I fellowship, where I go to church. I'm really picky about that. I just, I cannot afford to go sit through something like that. I can't afford it in my life. I can't, you know, to be, to be in a fellowship is, is a lifeline for me to be in, in, in a place that, that, uh, that has the spirit. I'm not talking about like jumping up and down, like during that, that is not what I'm saying. I'm just talking about like a heartfelt message of depth 
in the homily. I'm talking about people who actually who are hungry for the Lord. And the Lord is saying that there's a hunger right now in the church that he is wanting. That there's like a harvesting right now in the church. There, there are people who are like waking up and they're wanting to hear the Lord and to see the Lord and what he's doing. And <clears throat> he goes on to say, I want to teach you how to hit the target. Meaning, I want to show you how to conquer sin. There are strongholds that can be easily dealt with if you just come to my table, to the Eucharist, to the heavenly table. Come to my table. I just keep hearing this, come to my table, come to my table, come to my table. And in this section, the Lord showed me a bull's eye. And he showed me an arrow going straight to the bull's eye. And I believe what the Lord was saying is that he was describing sin, right? Um, for me, when when uh, I was in catechism early in my childhood, I I remember uh, teachers saying things like, you know, sin is like missing the target. I know that's like a very weak description of <laughs> sin, but maybe venial sin is like uh, missing the target. You know, it's like missing what God really wants to uh, um, bring you into. And so the Lord is saying that there are, uh, he describes it, the Eucharist, the heavenly table. And, and this is for me when it actually like unfolded that he was talking about the heavenly table, the mass, the adoration, the Eucharistic adoration. And even this morning, right before, um, right before releasing, uh, playing the push button, um, as I was showering, a lot of really good things happened to me in the shower, like revelation. Uh, I, I don't know if that happens to anybody else. Uh, but the Lord was telling me, he was reminding me actually of a vision. You know, I see all the time and I don't always pay attention to them because um, I don't know what they always mean. And then, but over the course of time, the Lord will bring it back to mind and he will remind me that this is what I'm talking about. And so for a while, I've also been seeing the Blessed Sacrament, but like an eye coming out of it. I see an eye inside of, instead of the, the Eucharist, I'm seeing the eye of God. And so um, he reminded me of that. And he's saying heavenly table, which is the mass, right? Because that's when, that's the moment when heaven meets and touches earth, right? We're, we're participating in, and that's the beauty of the Catholic faith. This is something that our Protestant brothers and sisters um, don't understand or, or are missing out on, you know? Um, and then the Lord said, I wish to heal you and your family, especially come to the table as a family, Watch what I can do when you come to the table. I will fill you with power. I will infuse in you virtue, holiness, and spiritual fruit. Moses, my friend, had his skin transformed in my presence. For Advent and this coming season of Eucharistic revival, I will show off with special graces. For my own sacrifice and bloodshed, was not for nothing. It is your power, your inheritance. Okay, that was a lot. Okay, so special break, special grace for the families who attend either adoration or or just in join the heavenly table in mass. Special graces for them, and specifically the Lord says power. Power is uh, what the Bible says, dunamis, right? The 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 power of the Holy Spirit. The you're gonna experience like the uh, like, and, and I don't know why he talked about Moses, right? He says he's because of the power. Uh, Moses was trans, his face was transformed, even though he didn't see it. Everybody felt the power that he had because his face was literally shining. He had to cover his himself. Um, and so by being in the presence, and this is not stuff that's like, um, this is, this stuff is, is stuff we already know about our faith. But this is something that the Lord is specifically wanting to give you this Advent season. He wants to give you power. He wants to transform you. He wants to conquer sin. He wants to remove strongholds. He wants to bring about a Eucharistic revival in the church. One that I don't think many people, um, or at least my generation, 
Um, I'm in my 30s. Uh, I have not ever seen, you know, something that we have not ever seen. And so I, I literally, I heard the word infuse and the word infuse is used to describe the spiritual, uh, the spiritual fruit. Okay. The fruits of the spirit. And I have a whole word on this in my blog that the Lord has talked to me already about fruit. And basically, uh, what I can remember from that is that it's the, it's the perfection of virtue. So it's, it's, the, think about it like the first fruits of, of, uh, of, of harvesting. You give, you give, um, of the first fruits of your money, you know, your 10%, all of that. Well, God says, I'm giving you first fruits in the spirit. So it's, it's almost like what, uh, a, a heavenly taste of a perfection of virtue. So the Lord wants to infuse that into your soul and make you a virtuous person. He wants to help you out. You know, it's like getting that, that vitamin B12 booster and the vitamin C and D boosters for the, for the, for the cold season, right? Um, he wants to help you out in the spirit. And then I, have been hearing the Lord speak to me about Eucharistic revival. And I believe, I believe that the Lord is bringing about a Eucharistic revival in the church. I believe there's going to be like movements. There's going to be just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to say Eucharistic revival coming and we got to bring it about. Um, God wants to show off. God wants to show off this Advent and, and he wants you to watch. He wants you to watch what he can do. Watch what he can. That means you got to pay attention and be aware of like, okay, like, you know, if you go to the gym, um, maybe you take pictures every Friday and then you compare your, your progress, right? He wants you to watch. He wants you to see what he's going to do. It's kind of like keeping a gratitude list, right? If you're, if you're in a, in a hole of, self-pity then the way you get out of it is through making a gratitude list and little by little you start becoming more aware of the graces so just becoming more aware so that's the assignment to become more aware bring your family and watch what the lord can do with his power and then the lord showed me uh mm -hmm. vessels like uh, jars of clay and this is what he said to me he said you are my vessels and I will fill you up with new wine, a fresh spirit. One particular grace I am giving this Advent is for the families. Wow. And guys, like when I sat down to write this, I did not know God was speaking about the family. He, he is saying family. I heard him say families. Um, but then we are the vessels and a new wine. So think about the new wine in the miracle of uh, the first miracle of Jesus, right? At the wedding at Cana. So this is like, so I'm getting chills. Oh my gosh. Um, this is, this is, this is what he wants to do. Um, then the Lord said, uh, I want to show you the crucifixion from all sides. He literally showed me, I was, I was standing behind the cross and I was looking at him from behind the cross. I didn't see the whole thing. I just knew that I was behind the cross. And um, and the Lord, the Lord wants to show you his crucifixion, his sacrifice in a new way. He wants to give you a new perspective. He wants to change your attitude. He wants to renew your mind. And the Lord says, come and watch from the heavenly table. So the heavenly perspective, okay? He wants to show you the heavenly perspective of the crucifixion and more will be revealed to some of you. That's a promise. The Lord will reveal more to you. And Father, we say more, more, more in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Um, okay, and then the Lord says, I want to challenge you to come every single day to my heavenly table. Watch how I will feed you. Just watch. Okay, there it is again. It's a lot of re repeating, but it's what I kept hearing over and over. And then the Lord showed me um, a well-groomed man with a long beard. And, and 
And I was like, what is this? What is, you know, what is this? And so the Lord said to those who accept my challenge and discern this word for their lives, I will pour out these specific gifts of the Holy Spirit. Watch this. He says, words of wisdom, words of knowledge, and supernatural understanding. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I'm almost done. Um, but what the Lord is saying is that he wants to bring you into a spiritual maturity. Okay, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go here into the Bible on spiritual maturity in Hebrews chapter 5, where St. Paul is talking to the church. And he is going on and on and on and on about like all this theology and this revelation about like Jesus being the high priest and the forerunner and all of that. And then he comes to chapter 5, verse 11, and he's like, okay, hold on, hold on. Um, he says, um, about this, we have much to say, and it is difficult to explain. For you have become sluggish, hard, dull of hearing. Although you should be teachers by this time, you need to have someone teach you again the basic elements of the utterances of God. Other versions say the oracles of God. You need milk and not solid food. Everyone who lives on milk lacks experience of the word of righteousness, for he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those whose faculties are trained by practice to discern good and evil. So what what St. Paul is saying, I believe is relevant right now. We've come into a place in the church where we don't we don't have revelation anymore. Uh, it's really like what even what I'm saying right now, like people might think I'm like so super kooky, and that's okay because the Bible also says in 1 Corinthians 2:14 that the natural person does not accept what pertains to the spirit of God. For to him it is foolishness, and he cannot understand it because it's judged spiritually. The spiritual person, however, can judge everything, but is not subject to judgment by anyone. So, so what the Lord is saying is that, uh, yes, this, this, uh, the church doesn't really have a lot of this revelation anymore. Because we've uh, we've said things, and I've heard people say, well, there's no such thing as prophets anymore. That's like Old Testament. That doesn't really exist anymore. And that was really just for the early church because the early church uh, needed it, right? Well, you know what? The book of Revelation says that the end time, um, the end time prophets, the two witnesses, uh, they're going to breathe fire on people. We're going to have fire breathing prophets in the end times. And I don't know about you. I don't know if you looked around, but like, it's like end times seasons, okay? And and so I I don't I mean either I'm crazy, um, or demon possessed or something, or or either like God is speaking to me, but I hear the voice of God, and I know plenty of people who do. Okay, so so the gifts of the Holy Spirit are very very real. And this is what the Lord wants to give people through the Eucharist, through the heavenly table. He wants to give you the three prophetic gifts, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That's what the Lord wants to give you. But because we are children, we are childish, we still need milk. Like people don't even know how to pray in the spirit. People don't know that their dreams, that God's actually speaking to them through their dreams. Um, they don't know how to discern, you know, discernment is a weighing, you know, it's a weighing of, of, of what God is saying. You weigh the word, you test the word, you discern the word and people don't know how to do that anymore. And that's what the Lord is saying. He wants to teach you the utterances of God revelation. He wants to show you the oracles of God. And so I believe also that if you go to the heavenly table this advent the lord is saying he's going to give you these gifts he's going to teach you the holy spirit is the school of the holy the school of the the teacher the holy spirit is the teacher 
and he will, there is no such thing as a junior Holy Spirit. He will teach you and he will, um, he will share all of these things with you because he loves you. It's your father. Your father wants to have a relationship with you. This, this gift is not reserved for holy people. Listen, I am not, I don't hear and see God because I'm righteous and holy that I was, I was born this way. Like God gave me this gift from a very early age and I just never like, uh, I did, I thought I was just very imaginative and then I was, I was good at guessing and and the Lord has taken me on a journey to show me. The Lord had to show me that I was a prophet to the nations. Um, and so I pray that over for y'all. Um, the here's the thing. You can be in the anointing. You can the there's a difference between the Holy Spirit being upon you and the Holy Spirit being within you. There is a difference. There's a difference in the operation. So so I believe I, I if I'm in a better place in my life and if i'm in a better righteous relationship with the lord then i i am able to better hear from the lord but it doesn't mean you still can't hear from god and so um all these we've got curanderos and santeria and people reading cards and all of that they actually probably have the gifts of the holy spirit but they've been perverted they've been submitted to the you know the difference here's the difference between this and that the difference is your source. Is your source the Holy Spirit? Is it your imagination? Or is it a demonic source? You know, that's the thing. You know, where is your source coming from? Um, and I will finish off the word of God with this. The Lord says, please attend confession. He, I heard confession. Um, he says, I urge you so that you may hear my voice accurately, for I am putting a table before all of you. And let me just explain what the Bible means by putting a table before you. He says, uh, when I put a table before you in Psalm 23, he says, I, I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies, meaning the Lord, the Lord for the righteous person. And it can mean different things, right? But God has placed a strategy. He's placed... Um, He's ordained things for you. He's going to feed you. He's going to bring you into an alignment. He's going to walk with you. Like that's that's what I understand about the the pay, the the table in the in the Bible. Um and so so this is really exciting for me. Thank you for listening to this this far. Um I will share my testimony now about Advent last year. Um the word testimony really and we I don't think we do it enough as a church. The word testimony means um, to do it again with the same power and the same authority. So because I share my testimony with people, and, and if you're watching this, you're going to be blessed by it, literally, um, that the Lord is able to work that grace, that same power that, that he used on me for my testimony, that same grace that was poured into me gets poured out into other people and, and seeds of faith seeds of power go into you as you listen to somebody's testimony which is why it's so important i receive healing from people's testimonies um i receive revelation even through other prophets when i hear um somebody rev somebody uh, share a prophetic word i see in a different angle it's like so incredible um what the lord can do and um so here's here's my testimony i hope it blesses you my testimony last year, we we're going through a very difficult time in our marriage. And, um, and I won't get into all the details because it's not, all, it, you know, there's, it, it's not all my story to share, but suffice it to say, we're going to, going through a difficult time. And I was just desperate. I was in a really difficult place. I was, I was really, um, you know, just kind of, kind of listening to, um, Leaning into the Lord is what I was doing. I was leaning in to the pain, to the suffering. And that's what God, I believe, wants to do for people. He, he wants you to lean in, you know, lean into the pain, lean into the wounds of Christ. And that's where I was. And whoo, I'm going to get a little, a little, a little uh, glory filled, really. They're, they're, they're tears of, of pure salvation, of, of grace and joy. And the Lord... Um, I was driving from, oh, 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 okay, so difficult time in my life, and then I 
had this crazy idea, which I know now it was not my idea. It was the Lord that put it inside of me. The Lord put it inside of me to make these little advent trees. And I just, you know, it wasn't something that I saw on Pinterest. It wasn't anything like I, I had never seen this. I just had this idea of a advent tree uh, made out of pallet wood because I got into woodworking last year and um, it, that itself was a joy for me to discover this like creativity. Um, um, and and so I started building these Christmas trees out of pallet wood. I, I pulled out the circle saw, my power tools and started taking them apart and building them up and painting and doing just making them look super cute, like really farmhousey type, you know, anyway, if you're a girl, you, you know, where I'm you know what I'm talking about. Um, and then I put the, the countdown, the advent tree, the Jesse tree, also known as the Jesse tree. Um, it's a countdown uh, from the beginning of December or some people, it kind of varies. You know, a lot of people do it a lot of different ways, but it's a countdown to uh, the to Christmas Day. And uh, every single day is a reflection on the life of salvation, on, on salvation history, beginning with creation all the way until Jesus is born on December 24th. And so this year, last year, I, I put all these little ornaments on it. I made the ornaments. I made the tree. I painted everything. I sold so many of them. And that was really fun for me. But I don't know where this came from. You know, I never, I didn't grow up with a Jesse tree. It just came to me. And I started researching and researching. Okay, so up until this point, I'm driving back from Austin um, to San Antonio and and I see a billboard and the billboard says Advent and it's just black with white letters it, it says Advent and I'm like that's so strange why would that's a really you know peculiar word why would that be up on a billboard as I drive closer I realize it says adventure it just says adventure that's all it says and that it was covered up by some trees and I was like oh okay and I just felt and by this point I didn't I hadn't really explored my my prophetic gifts I just had this this sense I had this sense and this like weightiness like I just felt that I felt that I felt that the Lord was speaking to me and he said Advent adventure I had never seen a word within a word and I now I know that like prophets Prophets see those kind of things. Um, Advent adventure. The Holy Spirit is so poetic sometimes. And and I started researching, what does that mean? Well, it means to come. It means to come. And that's the message of Advent, really. And that's actually really similar to the message. It is the message that, I'm, that I delivered today. Um, and, and so I started thinking and thinking and thinking and i said why don't i amazon it i bet there's like a book i don't even know like what made me go down that rabbit hole and the 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 first book that comes up was called advent adventure and guess what it was it was the jesse tree devotional so i bought the book and i did the whole book because i felt that god at that moment was saying um i want you to actually do this I don't want you to just build these Jesse trees. I want you to actually do it. And I want you to like reflect on my, self, on my his, uh, salvation history. And also, I want to take you on an Advent adventure. And he did, you guys. He did. That is exact. We had a huge breakthrough in our marriage. Huge, huge, huge. Like one day I pray that we can share that testimony. That's not a public, something I can share publicly. Um, but it will make you cry. It will make you cry so much because it was a powerful moment in our marriage. And today, like looking back, and also we celebrate our anniversary in, during Advent. We got married on December 18th or 17th. Um, and so <laughs> I never remember. Um, so I know that the Lord worked on our behalf. Um, he brought people into our life that just put us in a trajectory um like like even just this this whole youtube channel is a complete miracle like the fact that i even feel confident enough to be in front of a camera um 
and um, just the development of our own personal testimonies and, and, and coming to Christ, really. So the Lord, I know, wants to do the same for people. Um, that was the first piece, that, that was probably the first moment of revelation that I had where I started to realize that there's something to this prophetic gift and it took me on this journey. I got trained. Um, I built a community where <laughs> like this, like me doing stuff like this, like all my friends do it. You know, all my, I have a lot of Protestant friends, so you, you're not going to see a lot of Catholics do it, but um, I have a community. I have accountability. Um, I have an incredible spiritual director. I have a fellowship. I evangelize. I do healing ministry. Like my life is the book of Acts, like miracle signs and wonders. I see them all the time. Um, and every single time, and I'm not going to say it's no big deal. Like I'm very used to it, but yet every single time that a word comes to pass or I receive a word of knowledge for someone, um, it's like, Oh my gosh, like God is real. Like God is real. And so anyway, um, my, that, that's, that's my life today. And I'm so grateful. Today's a day after Thanksgiving and I'm grateful for the Lord for everything that he's done for me. And so um, I, I release right now, I release this same power, grace, and authority that the Lord worked and labored in my life, this breakthrough. I release breakthrough for every person who adheres to this word, to do, who, who discerns this word and stands before the heavenly table, who goes to the heavenly table and, and discerns that for themselves. Father, I release that in the name of Jesus, the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Um, and thank you for listening this far. I'm going to break this video up into a few clips because it was a lot. And I know that you, you might, not everybody listens at the same time. So have a wonderful, wonderful Advent. More uh, more is going to come on this channel. I'm going to release a few other words for nations. The Lord is still speaking to me about uh, drinking the cup, all ye nations. It, it's like the Lord is still talking to me specifically about um, New York even. So there's more being added there. And uh, there's, yeah, so, so be on the lookout and uh, God bless you.